In this video, I'm going to explain why osmotic pressure increases as the concentration of a solution increases. But first, let's talk about osmosis. Osmosis is the process where solvent molecules move across a barrier that is separating two solutions that have different concentrations. The goal of osmosis is that both solutions will end up with the same concentration. Here is a system where we can that I can use to describe how osmosis works. So inside this container, we have this barrier right down through the middle. So go, let's go ahead and label that as our barrier. And this barrier is dividing two solutions in, inside this container. We have the solution on the left. The solution on the left is being represented by three solute molecules in this particular volume. The light blue is representing the solvent. And then we have solution on the right, which has seven solute molecules in the same volume of solvent. Because we have a three solute solution on the left hand side compared to a seven solute solution on the right hand side the solution on the left is lower in concentration than the solution on the right and again i'm just basing that off of the number of dots that i drew on each side of the barrier um, because the solution on the left hand side has fewer dots less sol solute in the same amount of volume, this solution has lower concentration. So when osmosis takes place for this particular system, the solvent, which is the light blue, is going to move across the barrier with the goal of um, making the two solutions have the exact same concentration. So we want these two solutions to not have a different concentration anymore. We're, we're gonna like meet in the middle and find a concentration um, that is the same for both of them. In order to meet in the middle, the solution with the lower concentration it needs to have its concentration increase. So we need to increase the concentration of this solution. One of the ways we could increase the concentration of a solution is just simply by adding more solute. However, in osmosis, the only thing that we can change is the solvent. So the way that we'll increase the concentration of this solution is by taking some of the solvent away. Remember, concentration is a calculation of solute per the volume of the solution. So the way that we can increase the concentration of a solution is just by getting rid of some of the solvent. On the other side of the barrier, we have our high concentration. Remember, we're trying to meet in the middle. We're trying to find a common ground here with concentration. So this one, we want to decrease the concentration of the solution. We're going to do that by diluting or adding more solvent. The solvent is going to be coming from the left-hand side. So what we're going to be doing is just taking some of the solvent away from the left-hand side. I'm going to have to move that little solute molecule re put my solute down here we're going to take some of the solvent away from the left hand side and we're just going to move it over to the right hand side like this we're going to decrease the volume on the left we're going to increase the volume on the right decreasing the volume on the left is going to cause the concentration to go up increasing the volume on the right is going to cause the concentration to go down and this process of moving the solvent will just spontaneously continue until the two solutions have equal concentration on the left hand side and the right hand side that is osmosis now let's talk about osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is referring to the pressure of the gases that are up, up above the surface of these two solutions. So this is open to the atmosphere. So we have atmospheric pressure pushing down on the surfaces of these liquids all the time. Like under normal conditions, it's just gonna be about one atmosphere. In osmotic pressure, we are looking for the pressure, the amount of pressure that we need to apply to the surface of this liquid to prevent osmosis from occurring at all. So we're wondering how hard do we have to push down on this liquid so that the solution itself doesn't have the ability to move solvent from the left side to the right side and raise the volume level inside, inside this system. So let me take this little extra solvent away that I added and I'm gonna put the solvent back on the left-hand side right here. And when we're trying to figure out what osmotic pressure is, we are looking at how much pressure needs to be applied to the surface of the right-hand side in order to prevent 
the volume from rising on the right hand side. So let's write that down. How much pressure must be applied to prevent volume from increasing? Again, this is the definition of osmotic pressure. It is the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, or the external pressure that is required to stop or prevent osmosis. We can calculate osmotic pressure using this equation, capital Pi equals MRT. Capital Pi is the symbol for osmotic pressure, so I'll make a note of that right there. Capital Pi looks a lot like lowercase pi, just lowercase pi is kind of fancy compared to capital Pi. So capital Pi, which is osmotic pressure, is calculated by taking the molarity of the solution molarity of the solution in question. So if we're trying to figure out what the osmotic pressure is, we're looking at how much pressure needs to be applied to the concentrated side. We want to know what the molarity is on this side over here, and you know how to calculate molarity. And um, osmotic pressure, like I said, is directly related to the concentration of the solution. The more concentrated this solution is, the more osmosis wants to occur. So the more it wants to have solvent molecules moving into this side and decreasing the concentration. When there's a lot of force or motivation behind the movement of the solvent molecules, you're going to need a plot to apply a larger pressure to prevent it from happening. The T, as you know, as you're uh, familiar with, this is referencing the temperature of the solution. And in this equation, we need our temperature to be in units of Kelvin. And R, as you know, is the ideal gas constant, 0 0.08206, with units liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin.